Now, the hiring spree from last year, is it starting to pay off in a huge way? In a very big way. Quantify that. I mean, if I just look at our net new money, so it's an indication of how many clients entrust us with new wealth has been record for the first half year, and that really is strongly on the back of those hirings we did last year. But how about in terms of cost to income ratio? I know you have a target of between 61 to 64 percent. Where are you in Asia compared to Europe, for instance? I mean, certainly the cost income ratio is higher in Asia because we're continuing to be in investment what would mode. That be? Um, would be in the high 70s but is basically, frankly, not something uh, that is uh, bothering us. Revenue momentum is the most important thing, and Asia has had the record revenues in the first half year, so profit contribution to the bottom line is double digit. So realistically, when do you see cost to income ratio falling? I think in the next couple of years, uh, we're still, as we speak now, investing in a new technology uh, platform here in Asia. Once that investment is done, I think the base investments will be done, and. I think revenue will translate directly into additional bottom line. Uh, you said you're pretty optimistic about Asia. What are your hiring plans? What are the expansion plans? And how much will Asia contribute to the, the overall business in the coming years? So if I look at Asia today is already 20 to 25 percent of our overall business. I think just looking at demographics, at macro, looking at market penetration that we have today, I think we can safely assume that Asia will become a third of our business in the next five years. Uh, North Asia, so greater China region, has still a lot of upside potential. If I look at markets like the Philippines, other markets in emerging Asia, Thailand, and then if I come to Southeast Asia, then Indonesia also has a lot of upside. What do you see the risks? Where do you see the risks? I think there are a number of risks, uh, geopolitical risks. I think we're all following w what's going on. Um, I think these are, frankly, tail risks. Uh, we don't necessarily think they will materialize. Um, on the macroeconomic side, indicators are tending in the right direction. The Eurozone is doing better than expected. Uh, Asia is doing great. Um, so, 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 so what are you advising your clients to do? I mean, we've seen the markets really rallying at record highs. Is the momentum sustainable going forward? And what's really behind this rally? Look, if uh, I just take as an indicator the cash that either funds, so institutional players or private clients are holding, they're actually still quite high compared to 2007. I mean, just if I look at our client base, and that's frankly representative of clients everywhere, of every type in terms of size, typically high net worth and ultra high net worth, they're still holding 23% of cash. I was looking at a fund survey. They're still holding around almost close to 5% in cash. These are almost historical highs. So there's still a lot of cash on the side. And what we've seen in the last few months is that if you were not in the market, if you were not invested, markets have continued to go up. So you had an opportunity cost. So I think there is, just looking at numbers, macro, corporate earnings, looking at the cash on the side of the markets, I think we're in for another certainly few months of markets testing new highs. So what are you investing clients to do with their money? Uh, today, private market equities, um, I think that's uh, quite uh, clear. Uh, public markets are doing fantastic. I think they will continue to do that for a while. The SNB will make a decision today, and there are murmurs out there that the Swiss franc, for instance, could be over valued is it according to the models the Swiss <laughs> franc has been overvalued uh, already for quite a while but in in the real world I think it's all about the relationship economic relationship between the eurozone and, and the Swiss franc and I think we've had a bit of a kind of a rally of the euro in the last few months to much great better levels I don't think they, they will do anything for the time being now, Boris, I want to go back to the business in Asia because earlier you were talking about how you're optimistic about it. Share with us the next strategic move for Bear in this part of the world. What we're actually doing this week with uh, also our supervisory board is we're looking at the strategy for the next few years here in Asia. I think the next move for us will be to enter in some of the onshore markets and the big elephant in the room is China. So what will you be doing? How will you be approaching the Chinese markets? I think currently we're looking at different ways of how we could approach the Chinese market. Uh, certainly, 
understanding the environment in which type of license uh, wealth manager could operate under uh, is currently the, the key concern that we have, the, the key focus that we have. Typically, I think in the country that has accumulated so much wealth so fast, there are consideration of diversification, so the market is ripe to diversify out of the local market. I'm talking about asset diversification, so asset allocation concern. And the second one is succession planning, which are two of our specialties. Could you be at a disadvantage compared to bigger rivals with investment banking, which can offer more complex, sophisticated products? Do you feel that way about it? Actually, those uh, rivals, they're all happy uh, to sell their products also into our open platform. So we have uh, access to all products, um, actually sometimes even better than those rivals that rely solely on their own products. Just one final question before we let you go. A lot of conversation about the blurring of lines between technology and the banking world. How are you embracing technology and fintech where the wealth management business is concerned? I think we're looking at technology on different uh, aspects. Uh, first of all, automation, uh, process automation, back office processes, basically coping with scalability and volume. Second area of application of technology is to help our bankers be more productive, have more information at their fingertips, have uh, what other industry call the robo advisors. We call it robo assistance to our uh, bankers. We think they will be very complementary in delivery our value proposition to clients and thirdly channels how do we interact with clients how do we leverage the data that we have to tailor better information and better recommendation for investments